Hello aspirants, uh, very warm welcome to Olive Board. This is Rohan Dange, your faculty for the day. And uh, in this session, I'll be speaking about a few concepts which have been in news and also the concepts which are very important from examination point of view. Right, so without much of a further ado, let's begin our discussion on the same. So as you can see on your screens, we are going to discuss finance module and I am going to take up a couple of concepts today. So let's talk about LIBOR. LIBOR stands for Lender, London Interbank Offered Rate. Now the LIBOR has ended by, the, by December 2021. That is the context of the news. Okay. So quite naturally it is important from examination point of view as well. Now what is LIBOR? A preliminary understanding would reveal to you that it is nothing but a benchmark interest rate at which, may, at which major global banks lend to one another. For example, if Citibank, which is basically an American bank, if it has to lend to SBI, State Bank of India, then it will use the LIBOR rate for lending operations. And these pertain to basically international inter operations. So therefore, you are looking at international interbank market for short term loans okay one more thing here to understand and learn is that you're looking at short term loans and not long term loans so it serves for short term loans with maturities from overnight to one year so libor what is the tenure overnight to one year and it also acts as a basis for corporate and government bonds mortgages student loans credit cards derivatives and other financial products okay moving forward now let's talk about how does LIBOR work. First of all, it is administered by ICE Benchmark Administration, which stands for IBA. And who is the regulating authority here when you talk about the IBA? It is UK's Financial Conduct Authority, FCA. So the regulatory body here is FCA, UK's Financial Conduct Authority. And the administration of LIBOR is done by IBA which is basically ICE benchmark administration. So every day intercontinental exchange asks major global banks how much they would charge other banks for short term loans. Now every country has big banks like for example India has banks like SBI or ICICI or Axis Bank. Likewise you have Bank of America, Citibank, you have HSBC, right? You have Standard Chartered, you have Dausch Bank. You have RBS. These are the major global banks. So the intercontinental exchange, which is basically ICE, it will ask major global banks, how much are they charging or how much, how, uh, uh, what is the quantum of the interest charge that they are going to levy in case they have to give out a short term loan. It then takes an average from these numbers. So LIBOR is what it is an average interest rate at which major global banks borrow from one another. This is the best possible definition from, for LIBOR which you can have. Like in the exam, they ask you in the descriptive part to write about LIBOR. All you have to do is you have to write about the fact that LIBOR is an average interest rate at which major global banks borrow from one another. Okay. If I have to see the common denominating currencies which uh, underline LIBOR, it is based on five currencies and those are the US dollar, the Euro, the British pound, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. Okay. These are the five currencies which underline the LIBOR. Okay. And the combination of five currencies and seven maturities. Maturity is basically maturity period. Okay. It could be for 15 days, it could be for one month, it could be for three months, for four months, for six months, for one year, for nine months. So it is a combination of five currencies and seven maturities that leads to a total of 35 different LIBOR rates. Correct. And then an average is taken. And obviously it is calculated and reported on every business day. So it is a daily activity, by the way. Okay. 
so these are the, some of the what you can say technical inputs which you require to understand how libor works now according to the recent deci uh, decisions because i have said it was in the news currently recently there were some scandals okay while fixing the libor rate and obviously there were question marks surrounding that so the fca confirmed in march 2021 that 26 libor settings will end on december 31st 2021 but that means there are nine libor settings which will not end correct how many libor settings are there 35 right so overnight libor settings for one month three months six months and 12 months which are denominated by the us dollar they will end only by june 30th 2023 so these are in operation right now 1 3 6 and 12 months of maturities denominated by us dollar okay of course this is a significant move why is because before this landmark decision was taken libor was seen as an indicator of the health of the financial system it was seen as a scale on which the health of the financial system was gauged so it helped the economists and the bankers to preempt and estimate the trajectory of the policy rates of various central banks which also helped corporate houses to design and devise their policies for financial years so libor became an important scale on which the banks and the corporates devised their strategies around now with the termination of 26 libor settings it has obviously dealt a huge blow not only to the banking community but also to the corporates who are no longer in a position to accurately predict the uh, the way ahead or the direction of the rates pursued by various central banks and therefore this move is significant a total of 400 trillion dollars of financial products are presently exposed to libor and of this at least 52 trillion dollars of financial products will still be exposed to libor quite naturally because 1 3 6 and 12 months of maturities with us dollar denominated libor settings are still operational when it comes to india india has about 532 billions of uh, uh, usds of external loans which are exposed to libor that means the ex the, the interest rates for these loans are still determined by libor now since quite naturally this this clearly looks like a transition away from libor it will pose us Uh, a, a risk not a risk but a challenge for banks and the financial system because quite naturally you are trying to move towards a new system so you will have to denominate and you will have to associate and you will have to weave your new rates and then tie them with your future loans now obviously libor was brought to an end because there was a significant damage to the credibility there were some rate fixing scandals which were unearthed in 2020 2012 and since then there has been a huge question mark regarding the veracity and the verifiability of these libor rates so the panel bank submissions were alleged to be inaccurate or manipulated to project market strength so of course this is a erosion of confidence when you talk about consumer confidence this also spells out the breach of market trust okay and therefore you will see that the market trust or the consumers confidence in libor started dwindling at a breakneck speed okay now since we are trying to understand libor let us understand illiquidity we know that liquidity is a situation where the system is infused with some cash when cash is freely freely flowing in the system it is called as liquidity but what is illiquidity illiquidity refers to condition where assets cannot be exchanged for cash easily okay for example i have gold which is an asset but is there enough cash in the system to buy that amount of gold real estate land which is an asset which is a physical asset it might be available but is there enough cash available in the system to be exchanged so
So now, despite the reforms introduced, the number of transactions in the short-term wholesale funding markets have reduced over time. Short-term wholesale funding market means what? Banks require short-term loans and huge short-term loans, right, to carry out their day-to-day -day operations, right. Now there has been a significant drop with regards to the number of transactions. Why? Because there is a severe cash crunch. Now financial institutions have become more hesitant to lend on unsecured basis for terms longer than overnight. Why? Because of the uncertainty and the lack of trust created by the manipulation of LIBOR interest rates. So LIBOR also became more vulnerable to short term market illiquidity because now banks are not willing to lend to each other because they simply don't trust the LIBOR fixed interest rates. And as a result of that, because banks are not easily lending to each other, there is an amplification of price because now they might charge if they are lending, they might charge a higher interest rate. So that might essentially lead to an amplification of price that could destabilize the entire ecosystem of the banking networks across the globe. Also financial transactions are better suited to reference rates that are close to risk free. But now increasingly there has been a consensus which has developed that the LIBOR linked interest rates are not risk free because quite essentially they are manipulated and therefore there is an underlying risk associated with them because they are not based on the principles of market fundamentals but they are based on speculation, manipulation and they are not free of what you can say predetermination. Now there are certain alternative reference rates like for example you have SOFR. SOFR stands for secured overnight financing rate and now with the recent uh, what you can say drop in confidence with respect to LIBOR SOFR has been widely used as a substitute or an alternative for LIBOR across the world. SOFR is based on transactions in the US Treasury repo market. Repo stands for repurchase options. Right. Like for example, the Reserve Bank of India also lends short term and long term loans to the banks of India at a repo rate. Right. Wherein the government securities are exchanged for money. If the banks want money, if the banks want loans, what they will do? They will repurchase the government securities. Okay. Or rather they will sell their government securities or treasury bills to the government and the government or rather the RBI and the RBI will give them money. That is how the uh, what you can say the borrowing and lending happens between banks and Reserve Bank of India. Likewise US Treasury also has a repo market wherein US Treasury bills are purchased and repurchased. Right. So the rate at which those US Treasury bills are purchased and repurchased that rate is used as a reference for determining SOFR which is secured overnight financing rate. Okay. Now the difference between LIBOR and SOFR is that SOFR is an overnight secured reference rate. Why? Because it is backed by US Treasury. It is backed by US Treasury repo market. Whereas that was that wasn't the case with LIBOR. LIBOR was essentially an unsecured reference rate. It was not secured. It was not backed by an asset. If you talk about a US Treasury bill after at the end of the day, it's an asset, correct? So SOFR is a secured because it is transaction based. It is collateralized. What do you mean by collateral? Collateral is something that will secure your loan. If you want to take a education loan, then sometimes you use your property as a collateral, correct? Here, when you talk about the overnight lending rate in the international market, the US Treasury bills, they are referenced and therefore they serve as a collateral. Okay. When it comes to administration, it is administered by the New York Federal Agency that broadly measures the borrowing cash overnight with US Treasuries as collateral. Right. Likewise, there are other benchmark rates also, which is CHF Saron, EUR, ESTR, Ester, GBP, Sonia. They are already in use since March 31st, 2021. There is JPY Tona also. So all of these, as you can see, they have been linked with CH. Saron has been linked with Franc. Esser has been linked with Euro. 
सोनिया हैज बिन लिंक विद द ग्रेट ब्रिटेन पाउंड एंड टोना हैज बिन लिंक विद द जापनीज यन सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम एसओ एफ आर दीज आर ऑल्सो द फोर अदर बेंच मार्क रेट्स विच हैव बिन यूज बाय द इंटरनेशनल बैंकिंग सिस्टम टू डिटरमाइन इंटरेस्ट रेट्स आई बेग यू पार्डन फॉर दैट सो ऑल दीज बेंच मार्क्स आर हैविंग एन ओवर नाइट टेन यूर एज अपोज टू लाइब और विच आर टेन ओवर फ्रॉम ओवर नाइट टू वन ईयर ओके नर आर सर्टन लिमिटेशन एसोसिएटेड विद एसओ एफ आर इट इज बेस्ड ऑन रिपर्चेज मार्केट एज आई टोल्ड यू बिफोर सो इट इज ऑब्वियसली एट द मार्केट मर्सी इफ द मार्केट प्लम इट इफ द मार्केट टम्बल देन एसओ एफ आर विल ऑल्सो सी अ डाउनफॉल एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट इट विल लीड टू अ ड्रास्टिक फॉल इन द इंटरनेशनल लेंडिंग रेट्स or there could be a big spike if the repo rates are hiked then sofr will also soar like it had soared in september 2019 from 2.14% to 5.25% in a single day there are obviously other challenges also there are multiple complexities which are involved in the shifting from libor to another regime those could be simply uh administrative issues there could be uh, you have to navigate from one rate to another and there could be a, a what you can say a, a ton of paperwork that you have to navigate so there could be a lot of volatility in the financial markets as the deadline arrives because speculation is also a factor when it comes to the determination of interest rates the reserve bank of india has issued two circulars giving the road map to the transition and arrangements to be made for the same so now the reserve bank of india is also getting ready to face the challenges in association with uh, the transition from libor to sofr okay now let's talk about another piece of news from libor we move to marginal standing facility now the reserve bank of india in 2020 had extended the relaxation relating to msf which is marginal standing facility and it had also extended the relaxation relating to the maintenance of crr which is cash reserve ratio now why and how 2020 was a year when corona virus induced pandemic or lockdown led to the plummeting of the economy led to a crash in the economy and as a result of that there was little cash in the system there was little revenue for the government and the government ideally wanted the corporate sector and the private sector to expand and since the government wanted to expand uh, the private sector wanted to expand the government expected the banking system to lend a helping hand and to give cheap loans but that can that could only happen if there was a relaxation with respect to crr because the banks have to maintain a portion of their ndtl net time deposits net demand and time liabilities with the rbi higher the crr lower will be the capacity of the banks to give out loans and lower the crr higher will be the capacity of the banks to give out to give out loans it's simple you have 100 rupees to give out in the market as loans but if your crr requirement is 25% i'm just giving you a example to understand better if your crr requirement is 25% that means the banks have to park 25 rupees with rbi and therefore they are left with only 75 rupees to lend out in the market correct on the other hand if crr is brought down to 20 then the banks can lend out 80 rupees in the market now since the banks are lending more they can bring down their interest rates because that will still not compromise on their profitability but if the crr is hiked to 30 then the banks can only lend 70 rupees in the market which means that they will have to hike their interest rates and as a result of that it will lead, lead to the crowding out of the private sector why crowding out simply because now since the loans have become costlier the private sector or the corporates would not be willing to aggressively expand and take new loans and therefore this was seen as a liquidity measure because there were certain relaxations relating to the maintenance of crr okay and quite naturally 2020 was an exceptional year of exceptional hardships and cash crunch so marginal standing facility the rbi as a temporary measure had increased the borrowing limit of the scheduled banks under the msf scheme from 2% to 3% of their deposits 
with effect from 27th of March 2020. Earlier, the above relaxation was granted till 30th of June 2020. The MSF is a window for scheduled banks to borrow overnight from the RBI in an emergency situation where interbank liquidity dries up completely. That means when the banks don't have enough funds at their disposal to carry out their daily maintenance activities and administrative tasks. So the marginal standing facility is basically a window for the scheduled banks to borrow overnight using the interbank lending rates. So banks borrow from the RBI by pledging government securities, correct? The banks will pledge their government securities, which is nothing but an instrument of investment. And in return, they will get the money from Reserve Bank of India. But that will be at a rate higher than the repo rate. Why? Because this is an exceptional arrangement. You are requiring money on an urgent basis. So repo rate is the rate at which the RBI lends money to commercial banks against the securities that is the government securities in the event of any shortfall of funds. Also loans provided at repo rate are provided for a specified period with an obligation that the bank will repurchase the securities back at a predetermined rate. Suppose a bank is getting a loan from RBI then the rate is determined that okay now you are pledging your government securities when you give back the loan money you will get back your government securities at 9% rate. So that rate is predetermined for a specific period of time. That is how the liquid liquidity adjustment facility works under the repo rate system in India. Right. But MSF is a exceptional measure. So repo rate is the rate at which RBI lends money to commercial banks while marginal standing facility is a rate at which RBI lends money to scheduled banks. The repo rate is given to banks that are looking to meet their short term financial needs. So whenever you come across the term repo rate, bear in mind that it pertains to a short term financial need of the bank. But MSF is meant for lending overnight to banks, not short term. Short term could be one year also. But MSF is strictly restricted to lendings of over uh, lendings with maturities of overnight. So lending at repo rate involves a repurchase agreement of securities. but when RBI lends money to the government or to the banks under the MSF system, there, are, there is no repurchase agreement of securities. Under MSF, banks are also allowed to use the securities that come under the SLR in the process of availing loans from RBI. Like for example, the SLR requirement in India is around 20%. The banks have to keep 20% of their NDTL, net demand and time deposits and liabilities with RBI, correct? Now when the banks are keeping 20% of their NDTL with RBI, a portion of that 20% could also be uh, managed through government securities. Government securities work, say suppose 5% of 20% is already with the RBI. Under MSF, the banks are used to, are allowed to use the securities that already they have pledged under the SLR if they want to avail loans from RBI. Correct. So for example, if ICICI bank has already pledged 5% of government securities out of their total SLR requirement to RBI, then they can use those government securities to get a loan under the facility of MSF, marginal standing facility. So under SLR, commercial banks are mandated by RBI to maintain a stipulated proportion of their deposits in the form of liquid assets. Which are those liquid assets? Obviously cash, gold and securities. Correct? So cash reserve ratio. On 27th of March 2020, the minimum daily maintenance of CRR was reduced from 90% of the prescribed CRR to 80%. Correct? So there is a certain level of prescribed CRR. Now it, it the banks had to minimum maintain 90% of the CRR, but it was brought down to 80%. Again, keeping in mind the exceptional circumstances of the year 2020. So the, this facility was available till 26th of June 2020. Again, I will repeat CRR is the amount of liquid cash that banks have to maintain with the RBI as a percentage of their total deposits. Okay. So there's a difference between CRR and SLR. SLR can be maintained with the RBI in the form of liquid assets like cash, gold and securities. Whereas CRR has to be strictly maintained in the form of only and only cash and the third facility is the marginal standing facility 
wherein you can also use your pledge securities under SLR to get overnight loans from RBI as a bank. Okay. So let's take a look at some of the terms. For example, scheduled banks. What is a scheduled bank? Any bank which is listed in the second schedule of RBI Act 1934 is considered as a scheduled bank. Right. And the banks included in this category should fulfill two conditions. The paid up capital and collected fund of the bank should not be less than rupees 5 lakh and any activity of the bank shall not adversely affect the interest of the depositors. Then there are commercial banks. It refers to both scheduled and non-scheduled commercial banks which are regulated under the Banking Regulation Act of 1949. Okay. And what is LIF? Liquidity Adjustment Facility. Basically, it is a tool used in monetary policy by the RBI that allows banks to borrow money through repurchase agreements or for banks to make loans to the RBI through reverse repo agreements. And what is reverse repo rate? Reverse repo rate is the rate at which RBI borrows money from commercial banks within the country. Okay. So with this, we come to the end of today's lecture. Remember the three C's, commitment, consistency and eventually you will celebrate. So still, still the time we meet next. This is Rohan Dange signing off from Olive Board. Stay tuned for the next installment of our finance series on concepts. In the next week, I'll be talking about some more concepts. So till the time we meet next, this is Rohan Dange signing off from Olive Board. Thank you. Take care. Be healthy and stay safe.